Assalamu alaikum guys, guess who's with me here in Chicago? Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing very well, Eddie. How are you? All right, all right, we're about to have, alhamdulillah, we're good, good. We're gonna have some lunch and then we're gonna go ahead and talk and catch up. And would you guys like to be a part of the conversation? Great, you would? Okay, <laughs> we'll be right back for more. Assalamu alaikum. I just heard the story about Hajj and Umrah and m many people, uh, I'll let, him, I'll let uh, the Shaykh go ahead and, and, and share, share this with us. Uh, it really uh, touched me, inshallah, I'll touch you guys too. Go ahead, explain what you were telling me. So, you know, when a, lot, when a lot of people think about Hajj, their approach is, you know what, it's an obligation upon me, let me just get it done and over with. We don't realize that Hajj is actually a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only is it an opportunity to see your brothers and sisters from all over the world, not only is it only an opportunity to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you so much in Hajj. Like one of the stories I like to share is that, you know, my family, we were trying to have a, a, a child for quite some time, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't will it. Yet last year I made the intention to go for Hajj, and a few months later, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us, you know, with my, with my wife getting pregnant, Alhamdulillah. And that's just one example. Other brothers were trying to get married. Literally within weeks, they were able to find someone to get married to. Other brothers were trying to get sustainable jobs that you know will last long. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala provides. So, my dear brothers and sisters, put your trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and see what He does for you. Make the intention to go for Hajj while you're young, so that you can enjoy it and do it properly, and then see all the gifts that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives. I want to share an interesting uh, story with you. I, I read an article. There was a hafiz from. Uh, from Bosnia, and he wrote this article of a man. Now I know that. Look, if 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 someone gets sick, they get cancer, whatever, whatever it is. I mean, you you go about and you you expend your energy to find a cure. You go out there like you know, right. you know, in any way possible. This man did that. He got he had cancer. Mm. I think he had he had uh, liver cancer. Okay, and the article uh, talks about. This is the, the Sheikh that interviewed him and then he wrote about it because he was fascinated with it. So what happens is that he had exhausted every means, right? And they both basically wrote him off. They told, told him that he has, you know, a few weeks to live. Mm -hmm. True story. And he's like, what am I going to do now? He's like, I'm going to... And, and they reminded me because you're talking about Hajj and Umrah. So he right. said, I'm going to go to, to Umrah, right? Uh, and he went down there and he met someone who told him about the Hadith where the Prophet oh, someone was talking about Zemzem. Yes. So he was talking about the Zemzem and then uh, he ended up drinking the Zemzem water and whatnot. He came back and he ended up, uh, the, the tumor stopped growing so and then it started to reverse. How what do you think? Can you share the hadith with us and oh, tell us what do you think? What are your thoughts on that? Of course, of course. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he tells us that zamzam lima shuriba lah. That zamzam is whatever intention you drink it for. So you heard this amazing story that this brother was telling that he had cancer and it started reversing. I'll share my own personal story. So in 2012, before I moved to Calgary, I wanted to start off my job on the right foot. So I said, you know what? Let me go and perform umrah. I go and I perform umrah and I start realizing that man, I'm going bald. My hair is really thinning. Subhanallah. I need to do something to reverse that. So halfway between your Umrah, it's the son of the Prophet Sallam, to go and drink Zamzam and he used to wipe it over his head and wipe it over his face. So at that time, I took the Zamzam and I wiped it over my head. I'm like, yeah Allah, I'm too young to start going bald. This can happen. And Alhamdulillah, I mean, you're not gonna see it now, but the bald spot that I had growing, like the brother was talking, it just reversed SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah, I have a full set of hair now. So that's just one of the miracles of Zamzam. And obviously there's thousands of others that you know, people experience. Any sort of sickness that people have, people can cure by going for Umrah and go for Hajj, putting your trust in Allah, using the spiritual means. A lot of the times you get so caught up in the physical means, go to the doctor to cure. But how about the spiritual means? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a chef, He is the one that cures. And He has given us all these tools like Zamzam and going for Hajj and Umrah and making dua and doing Ruqya and reciting Quran that we need to take advantage of as well, inshaAllah. I mean, is that amazing? Look, he's got. Look at the hair. <laughs> Allah, 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 it's still there. It's still there. I mean, what do you, you said? Something really important because obviously, uh, Islam is is something you know that captures the hearts when people look at the Quran. Right. You know, God Almighty, you know, calls us Allah to think, to rationale. It's not like many religions where it's just some kind of voodoo. It's something like you know pulls you and just have faith. You of know course. what I mean? So right. can you can you elaborate on that? You know. Uh, for some people they think, oh, okay, this is just like any other religion, say for the not your Muslims tuning in. Right. Because Islam is really, you know, something that, that calls you to, you know, it doesn't negate science, it doesn't negate, you know, the rationale, the, so right. the difference between the two. Of course. So I, I often get asked, how do you know that Islam is the true religion? And I can only share from my own experience and from what I've read. 
So I say that in order for the true religion to be true, it has to fulfill three things. Number one, it has to be logically sound. That you shouldn't be able to find loopholes in its legislation, loopholes in its historical preservation, loopholes in you know just the things that it's claiming. Number two, it has to be spiritually enlightening, meaning that it has to make me feel as if I'm getting, becoming a better person, right? And if I'm not becoming a better person through this religion or through this faith, then something's wrong with it because there's supposed to be enlightenment with faith. And then number three is what it does to an individual in terms of connecting them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like deep down inside, we all know that God exists. We cover it up with sins, we cover it up with other things, and that's how we learn to deny. But the reality is we know deep down inside that He exists. So the religion that is true has to be a direct connector to God. I Meaning it doesn't put up intermediaries between you and God. It doesn't put up you know, anything else between you and God. So you have a direct relationship. And that for me is how I feel that Islam is the true religion. Because it makes sense logically. It's preserved to the T. Like you look at the way the Quran is preserved. For centuries, generation to generation, multiple people memorize the Quran. Millions of people memorize the Quran. And that's how they transmit it. Spiritually enlightening. It's the only religion that I know of that five times a day takes time out of their day to remember God and makes God the focus and crux of their living and everything that they do. And then connecting you directly to God, which was my third point, I don't know of any other religion that doesn't put any intermediaries or conduits. You don't have to go to your Imam to seek forgiveness. You don't need to go to your Imam to get him to make dua. You can do those things yourself. So that's how I understand Islam to be the true religion. We're going to go ahead and have some lunch and we'll check back with you in a few inshallah.